Hi friends, welcome to day 4 part 2 to solve UPSC prelims questions 2014. Let's get straight into question number 12. Which one of the following is the correct sequence of food chains? It is factual and uh, if you are not aware of these uh, data, please do not attend such questions. Diatoms are the primary producers and uh, crustaceans feed on diatoms and herrings feed on crustaceans. The answer is A. Yes, uh, crustaceans are actually consumers and heterotrophs. Question number 13. If you travel through the Himalayas, you are likely to see which of the following plants naturally growing, uh, growing there. Actually, oak, rhododendron, and sandalwood. All the three are found, but the presence of sandalwood uh, in Himalayas is negligible because it, it is actually found in moist, deciduous forests. And hence, the answer to this question is A, 1, and 2. You can look at this. This is oak, rhododendron. It's very beautiful and gorgeous. And these are sandalwood trees. Question number 14. If you walk through the countryside, you are likely to see some birds tacking alongside the cattle to seize the insects, disturbed by their movement through grasses. Which of the following are such birds? Actually, painted stock. Have you seen painted stock in the countryside? You can see this is the picture of painted stock. It is actually found in the wetlands and it is a fishy eating bird. It is not seen in the streets of uh, the countryside. Common mina, yes, this is a common site. So, common mina is correct. Black neck crane, actually, black neck crane are also not found in the countryside. See, the, this is the black neck crane and uh, it is very lovely to look at it. It is a symbol of peace and they, they are revered by the Tibetan Buddhists. For centuries. So it cannot be spotted in the countryside. And um, the answer is B, 2 only, which is common mina. And we may think that uh, the common mina is disturbing this uh, cattle, but no, actually, the mina is eating the insects and the parasites and it is cleaning the body of the cattle. And uh, how is it beneficial to the mina? Yes, it is getting a steady supply of food from the cattle. This is a symbiotic relation. Question number 15. Other than poaching, what are the possible reasons for the decline in the population of Gangetic River Dolphins? Construction of dams and barrages on rivers. Yes, this is correct. Increase in the population of crocodiles in rivers. No, the population of crocodiles has nothing to do with the decline in population of dolphins. Most of uh, the decline of uh, the animal species are mainly because of the human behavior, the greediness of the human beings, and it has nothing to do with crocodiles or any other natural species. Getting trapped in fishing nets accidentally, yes, this is also a cause. Use of synthetic fertilizers and other agricultural chemicals in crop fields in the vicinity of the rivers, this is also the reason. Because uh, Gangetic River Dolphin is a freshwater thing, and in polluted water, it is suffocating. The answer to this question is C134. Question number 16 with reference to the two non-conventional energy sources, the coal bed methane and the shale gas, consider the following statements. Coal bed methane is the pure methane gas extracted from coal seams, while shale gas is a mixture of propane and butane only, underline the word only, uh, that can be extracted from fine grain sedimentary rocks. Such extreme statements are always wrong in UPSC, not always, usually wrong in uh, UPSC, and in this case also this is wrong. Because shale gas is a mixture of methane, propane and other gases and not only propane and butane. In India, abundant coal bed methane sources exist. But so far, no shale gas sources have been found. This is also wrong. The answer is D, neither one nor two. You can see the coal bed methane reserves that one shaded in red color. They are coal bed methane reserves. And the shale gas basins are found in... The following places, Kaveri Basin, Krishna Godavari, Damodar Valley Basin, Arakan Basin, Ganga Basin and Kambi Basin. They are the prospective basins for the exploration of shale gas and oil and most of it are fertile agricultural land and this may lead to environmental and social problems. Question number 17. In India, cluster bean gore is traditionally used as a vegetable or animal feed. But recently, the cultivation of this has assumed significance. Why? 
because the gum made from its seeds is used in the extraction of shale gas. That is the reason now they have assumed significance. So, before knowing uh, how it is used, we must know the concept of hydra hydraulic fracturing or fracking. And it is the process to extract the shale, shale gas. What happens is deep holes are drilled down in the shale rock. And suppose this is the rock you assume. Holes are drilled deep and after that, uh, horizontal uh, drilling is also done. Because the shale gas are found in horizontally and not vertically, so horizontal drilling is done. And then the fracking fluids containing uh, sand, water and chemicals are pumped into these holes to open up the fractures of the rock and uh, to release the gases. And gore gum, how it helps? It helps thicken the fracking, fracturing fluid. Uh, along with the fracturing fluid, the gore gum is added, which suspends the frac fan and carries it to the cracked rock. It carries, it helps in fracking actually. The sand then opens up, allowing the oil or gas to flow to the well. Question number 18, with reference to technologies for solar power production, consider the following statements. Photovoltaic is a technology that generates electricity by direct conversion of light into electricity. While solar thermal is a technology that utilizes sun's rays to generate heat, which is further used in electricity generation process. Yes, this is correct. Photovoltaics convert light to electricity without uh, converting the light to heat and then to electricity. But in the case of solar thermal, it is the uh, solar energy to light and heat and then to electricity. Photovoltaics generate alternating current while solar thermal generates direct current. No, this is wrong. Both of them generate direct current. Now, India has manufacturing base for solar thermal energy but not for photovoltaics. This is also wrong. There are uh, manufacturing companies which do produce photovoltaics. The answer here is A1 only. You can see AMV, Photovoltaics Private Limited, Navitas, Green Solutions Private Limited. They are engaged in manufacturing photovoltaics. Question number 19. There is some concern regarding the nanoparticles of some chemical elements. And uh, why? Because they can accumulate in the environment and contaminate water and soil. Yes, this is correct. They can enter the food chains. Yes, they can trigger the production of free radicals. Yes, all three are correct. D, 1, 2 and 3 is the answer. Because many of the nanoparticles are very stable and they have the tendency for accumulation. Question number 20. Which of the following are some important pollutants released by the steel industry in India? Tell you all the options are correct. Answer is D. Question number 21. Brominated flame retardants are used in many household products like mattresses, upholstery. And uh, why is there some concern about their use? Because they are highly resistant to degradation in the environment. Yes, this is correct. They are able to accumulate in humans and animals. Yes, this is also correct. C, both 1 and 2 is the answer. Brominated flame retardants are a mixture of man-made chemicals. And they are used widely in industry. And uh, they are commonly found in plastics, textiles, electrical and electronic equipments. And uh, they are very persistent in the environment. And uh, if they, pose, uh, they pose severe risk and threat to public health. The BFR treated products, whether they are in use or whether they are put as waste, they leach BFRs into the environment and they contaminate the air, soil and water. And these contaminants can also enter the food chain and uh, they can also lead to health hazards. Yes, we have come to the end of today's video. Um, have a nice day. Let's meet tomorrow. Thank you.